everybody uh hope that you guys are getting your week off to a great start as for me uh, business as usual outside of the obvious um, uh, before i get started look i cannot in any way express uh with words the level of gratitude i have for the outpouring of love and uh, well wishes, sentiments, and prayers uh, at the loss of my mom, who passed away Friday night, uh, roughly around close to midnight Friday night. Uh, my mom was struggling with uh, dementia, uh, but ultimately succumbed to a cardiac arrest. Um, and, you know, it is a part of the process. So many things going on in my head. And I did a video about that, so I'm, I'm not gonna get into it now, but I, I, for a while, I'm just gonna be pouring out the appreciation. I cannot tell you how much it means to get the love and the, 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 the feeling of uh, people caring about something that means so much to you. Um, obviously, I'm burying myself in work, which is just how I deal with any any challenge. I focus on the things I control. I focus on the things that I can contribute to. The things I cannot control, I don't allow to consume me. It's how I maintain my sanity. It's how I keep my focus and continue to do the things necessary for me to be effective. And uh, a few people have told me, um, one of my mentees, He's never met my mom, uh, but he probably had the most detailed response to my announcement of her death. And it, 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 the short of it was, I've never met her, but the seed she planted and produced in you that has impacted my life tells me all I need to know. And he went on to talk about that. But uh, so in essence, the, the carrying out of my legacy is how I'm going to celebrate her. Uh, the fulfillment of my DNA, so to speak, is how I'm going to celebrate her. But again, I have to say thank you to every last one of you who took the time to drop something as simple as praying for you. It means the world to me. And those of you who said a little bit more, trust me, I feel every word. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to move into this. You know the routine. If you like what you hear, click the like button, click the share button. Uh, if you're really feeling it, subscribe so that you can be aware of when new content is being added. Um, this is just one element, a component of what I do. Uh, thousands of hours of research, uh, research center, uh, think tank, tons of programs and community engagement. Um, and if you believe in that, then I also show your love and support and donate to uh, the work that we do at the Odyssey Project. But here I am, and I just came across another interview that KRS-One did uh, where he is literally caping for uh, the ignorance or the overlooking of uh, pedophilia uh, sexually uh, perversive behavior um, specifically as it pertains to Africa Bombada but he basically in this interview says he's not worried you know I mean the cusp of the interview is I know a lot of people who you know done some stuff you know those still my boys uh, what Africa Bombada did didn't change his contribution to hip hop uh, and on and on and his contribution to hip hop is his contribution to hip hop but at the same time I think as a part of the culture we have to call the spade a spade and we have to have standards because lives were negatively impacted and to hear him sit up and say hey man if people were hurt well number one you know people were hurt i don't i mean we're talking about dozens of people coming out and saying what this man is doing everybody can't be making this story up and everybody can't be lying about this situation uh and the, the thing is the guy tried to clean it up for him because he kept saying well you know that's if it's true I, and he and he would follow it up with 
you know, whether it's true or not, which tells me he knows more about it because he keeps coming back to it. And instead of taking the out on his 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 problem with the whole thing is that he doesn't believe it's true. He comes back and says whether it's true or not. So then it tells me you know that it is. But his whole dismissal of it, his whole marginalization of what people went through, uh, and me having made so many efforts to bring light to this problem of sexual abuse, childhood sexual abuse, the mishandling of young people who are put in situations with people they should be able to trust. The, these are boys, predominantly boys, th that are men now that have come forth and said that they were molested by this man. And the call of one of the most prevalent names in hip hop, KRS One, nobody is going to argue his contribution uh, when lacing tracks. Nobody's going to be able to argue his contributions at the time that he hit and the impact he had on the growth and exposure and expansion of hip hop, especially in the rap component of that. Nobody's going to argue that, but. When you sit down and you sit, and instead of saying, this is not the kind of behavior we want to be uh, expressive of the culture of hip hop, then you are basically diminishing the true meaning of it and it's birthing, which was birthed out of a need to have something to fill the void of the dissipation of the Black Panther Party, the Black Nationalist Party and other movements that were galvanized and then uh, ultimately inter um, uh, in intercepted, so to speak, by COINTELPRO, the FBI's program to infiltrate and dismantle uh, black unity movements. And so it was a black unity affair. It was a growth fair. You can't have growth and healing in such a toxic environment. So, so much was lost that we'll never know because of that. And nobody's looking at it that way. Everybody's looking at, well, hey, this guy, you know, along with Herc and a few others are literally the basically the founding fathers of human. That doesn't change anything, but we must acknowledge that a part of his imperfection was something that was chaotic and toxic at a level that it destroyed lives. And I think that one of the things I've been pointing to childhood sexual abuse and incest forever. It's in multiple books. It's in lectures. I talk about it all the time. It's one of the things I talk about when I talk about adverse childhood experiences uh, and epigenetics. But I think when we talk about it, we automatically move to the idea of young black girls. But what, what we don't realize... young black males report being sexually abused as a minor and we believe that those numbers are even higher uh, because males have a tendency not to report so it's highly underreported which means that it's a lot worse than one in eight which is bad uh, we know for a fact that on the conservative side we're talking about almost half of our women and on the liberal side 60 percent of our women have been sexually abused i've got the uh, clients that are in their mid to late 60s that I'm still dealing with that are still trying to overcome childhood sexual abuse and incest. And it's still an issue within the black community and males. I have young males and older males that I deal with that this is an issue with. And then we have a person like this who is basically saying, you know, whatever. And he still has a strong influence within that culture, within that community. And this is what he's doing, man. I call foul, I call BS, I call trash. I am very, very, I mean, the level of respect when he first did this, this isn't new. He's been doing this since the stuff came out. But obviously when he sits down, because it's such a polarizing position, people ask him about it. And every time that he's asked about it, it's an opportunity to say, I've rethunk it, I look at it, 
and after you know and i get it you know this cat this cat has made him had a mass impact on a culture that if you embraces you and you're thinking it from that perspective my thing is that if i were to find out there's nobody in the history of my life that i hold a higher regard for as a black male than my great grandfather the man who reared me uh my grandmother's parents reared me and the man who adopted and reared me as his own son literally uh i mean from from nine months on uh if i were to find out that he had molested somebody it would be a problem for me i would find a way to come to grips with it but i would not dismiss it i would not justify it i would not say it's the time and the errors everybody was doing it back then none of that it's foul and it's wrong and it's unacceptable and that has to be the clear message and that needs to be inculcated into the psyche of young black males but when you got one of the I mean, most influential uh, people in hip hop, period. Consistently, every time asked, saying it's not that big of a deal. Hey, man, you know, his whole thing, man. I know people, uh, you know, who are shooters in the hood. I know people who are, and all of that stuff is what's destroying the hood. Yes, I know shooters. Yes, I know D boys. Yes, I know. But my thing is, not once am I going to sit up and say that crap is okay. Not once am I going to sit up and say it's just what it is. I'm going to sit up and say, hey, man, it's time to get away from that. I've been pushing for it. I, I get things happen and you move on. But the bottom line is we have to have a standard. There has to be a code of conduct. There has to be something on which we can hold people accountable that keeps us healthy. We can't keep expecting broken boys to grow up and be healthy, whole heel men that know how to treat our daughters. I keep telling y'all, it's easy to sit up and look at these cats after they done caused harm to a woman or a child and sit up and talk about how much of an animal and a monster they are and how trifling and sorry they are. All those things are true, but we gonna talk about how they got there? Are we gonna talk about what's creating the monster? We don't want to look at that, but we want to sit up. Everything is approached from the back end. Everybody, Everything is about what's going on on the back end. Enough is enough. We've got to call a spade a spade. We've got to have a level of uh, integrity about what we're doing. If we're going to say we're going to be a people, this isn't just about music. This isn't just about put money in your pockets. This is about healing an entire nation of people who have been disenfranchised and mishandled from day one and start to build. But you can't do it if the toxicity and the poison is flowing from inside out. So on that note, that, that that's what I have for that. I mean, I can't tell you in one sitting, you know, especially a driving session, riding with Rick, I can't give you a, a, the totality of it, but if you look, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on this topic that I've done on multiple platforms. There are literally chapter upon chapter in books on this particular situation and the devastation that it creates and the identity crisis that it creates and how it flows downward and outward in our communities. And we are going to have to do something to change that. And I am sitting up and saying, man, I have lost pretty much all respect I have for KRS-One. I, I won't deny his impact and his influence, but I am not going to allow him uh, the, the, the level of respect that I once gave him as a pioneer. I am, like I said, I'm disappointed. And... But, but at this point, not surprised because he's been holding this for damn near a decade. The same position. It's time up. We need to hold people accountable. We need to stop letting people slide because they are celebrities. We need to make sure we are speaking and living the truth that will ultimately heal us. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said before, if you like what you uh, hear, Click the like button, click the share button. 
Uh, if you really and truly want to be informed, click the subscribe button. And if you believe in the work we do in all of the areas that we operate in the black community, donate. The information to donate is in the top of the description box. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping here. Hope that everybody is doing okay. Uh, look, I'm not gonna be long. I'm here to talk to you uh, straightforward. Look, the easiest thing to do is to complain, to complain about what others, what others are doing to us individually and collectively, to complain about what's not right, to complain about what should be going on. Uh, that's the easy thing. The hard thing to do is to take action, to do something to change the things that we are not satisfied with. For my entire adult life, I have spent uh, energy, effort, and time, and money into gaining an understanding of the things we go through, the things we face, the uh, mechanisms and machinations and, and, and all of the things that are working against us and what we can do to change that. And uh, a, a couple of decades ago, I created the Odyssey Project as a research center, as a think tank to take what we find in our research and to use it to develop strategies and solutions. Uh, also, as a program development and implementation arm to take what we can learn and create these mechanisms and programs and initiatives to uh, deploy within the black community. We've done this for years. If you follow me, you know the work we do, we consistently do, and we'll continue to do. We need your support. It's that simple. Look in the description box. You're going to see a link to support or if you prefer to give via Cash App, which some people do. There's the organization's uh, Cash App account handle in there also. I mean, we got wraparound services that include mental health, uh, men and women, uh, special services and advocacy programs for women who have struggled with domestic violence or in, uh, in some instances, childhood sexual abuse or in uh, other instances adult rate. Uh, we have other wraparound services for men for training and job placement. We are trying to make a difference, but we do need support. This is a massive and gargantuan effort uh, that's underway and it's so necessary. We're in last place in every statistical category from socioeconomics to politics to education to academics. Uh, we're in last place. And it's not because we are the worst, it's because we don't apply ourselves. We don't take action. It's time for us to take action. So I am challenging you to support the work we do. If you follow me, you know. So on that note, look, look in the description box and take action. On that note, I'm out of here.